Hi third graders, thanks for joining me for Read Aloud today. I hope you had a fabulous day. As you know, we've been reading Wonder by R.J. Palacio, and we learned that Wonder is a book that's written from many different perspectives. So what's really neat about that is you get in different characters' heads. So we've been in Augie's head, we've been in his sister Via's head, and we were just recently in Summer's head. Today we're starting a new perspective, <clears throat> and that's part four, we'll be in Jack Will's perspective. And his quote says, now here is my secret. It is very simple. It is only with one's heart that one can see clearly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. And that's from Antoine de saint exupere from The Little Prince. I might have pronounced that wrong. So uh, what's important about Jack right now is Summer gave him a hint um, of the bleeding scream, um, meaning that Augie was dressed as the bleeding scream the day that it was Halloween, and he was wondering why him and Augie had stopped being friends, and it was because um, Augie heard Jack talking about him. So we'll have to see what happens now that he has that clue and if he'll figure it out. Our first chapter is called The Call. So in August, my parents got this call from Mr. Tushman, the middle school director, and my mom said, maybe he calls all the new students to welcome them. And my dad said, that's a lot of kids he'd be calling. So my mom called him back, and I could hear her talking to Mr. Tushman on the phone. This is exactly what she said. Oh, hi, Mr. Tushman. This is Amanda Will returning your call. Pause. Oh, thank you. That's so nice of you to say. He is looking forward to it. Pause. Yes. Pause. Yes. Pause. Oh, sure. Long pause. Oh, uh-huh. Pause. Well, that's so nice of you to say. Pause. Sure. Oh, wow. Oh. Super long pause. I see. Of course. I'm sure he will. Let me write it down. Got it. I'll call you after I've had a chance to talk to him, okay? Pause. No, thank you for thinking of him. Bye-bye. And when she hung up, I was like, what's up? What did he say? And Mom said, well, it's actually very flattering, but kind of sad, too. See, there's this boy who started middle school this year, and he's never been in a real school environment before he was homeschooled. So Mr. Tushman talked to some of the lower school teachers to find out what they, who they thought were some of the really, really great kids coming into fifth grade. And the teachers must have told him, you were an especially nice kid, which I already knew, of course. And so Mr. Tushman is wondering if he could count on you to sort of shepherd this new boy around a bit. Like, let me hang out with him, I said. Exactly, said Mom. He called it being a welcome buddy. But why me? I told you. Your teachers told Mr. Tushman that you were the kind of kid who's known for being a good egg. I mean, I'm so proud that they think so highly of you. Why is it sad? What do you mean? You said it's flattering, but kind of sad, too. Oh, Mom nodded. Well, apparently this boy has some sort of, um, I guess there's something wrong with his face, or something like that. Not sure. Maybe he was in an accident. Mr. Tushman said he'd explain it a bit when you came into the school next week. School doesn't start until September. He wants you to meet the new kid before its school starts. Do I have to? Mom looked a bit surprised. Well, no, of course not, she said. But it would be the nice thing to do, Jack. If I don't have to do it, I said, I don't want to do it. Can you at least think about it, Mom said. I'm thinking about it, and I don't want to do it. Well, I'm not going to force you, she said. But at least think about it some more, okay? I'm not calling Mr. Tushman back until tomorrow, so just sit with it a little bit. I mean, Jack, I really don't think it's that much to ask you to spend a little extra time with some new kid. It's not that he's just a new kid, Mom, I answered. He's deformed. That is a terrible thing to say, Jack. He is, Mom. You don't even know who he is. Yeah, I do, I said, because I knew the second she started talking about him that it was a kid named August. Our next chapter is called Carvel. I remember seeing him for the first time in front of the Carvel on Ames Fort Avenue when I was about five or six. Me and Veronica, my babysitter, were sitting on the bench outside the store with Jamie, my baby brother, who was sitting in a stroller facing us. 
I guess I was busy eating my ice cream cone because I didn't even notice the people who sat down next to us. Then at one point, I turned my head to suck the ice cream out of the bottom of my cone, and that's when I saw him. August. He was sitting right next to me. I knew it wasn't cool, but I kind of went, ugh, when I saw him because I honestly got scared. I thought he was wearing a zombie mask or something. It was the kind of, ugh, you say when you're watching a scary movie and the bad guy jumps out of the bushes. Anyways, I knew it wasn't nice for me to do that. And even though the kid didn't hear me, I know his sister did. Jack, we have to go, said Veronica. She had gotten up and was turning the stroller around because Jamie, who had obviously just noticed the kid too, was about to say something embarrassing. So I jumped up kind of suddenly, like a bee had landed on me, and followed Veronica as she zoomed away. I could hear the kid's mom saying softly behind us, Okay, kids, I think it's time to go. And I turned around to look at the mom one more time. The kid was licking his ice cream cone, and the mom was picking up his scooter, and the sister was glaring at me like she was going to kill me. I looked away quickly. Veronica, what was wrong with that kid, I whispered. Hush, boy, she said, her voice very angry. I love Veronica, but when she got mad, she got mad. Meanwhile, Jamie was practically spilling out of his stroller, trying to get another look as Veronica pushed away. But Veronica, said Jamie, You boys were very naughty, very naughty, said Veronica as soon as we were further down the block, staring like that. I don't, I didn't mean to, I said. Veronica, said Jamie, us leaving like that, Veronica was muttering. Oh Lord, that poor lady, I tell you boys, every day we should thank the Lord for our blessings. You hear me? Veronica, what is it, Jamie? Is it Halloween? No, Jamie. Then why was the boy wearing a mask? Veronica didn't answer, or Veronica didn't answer. Sometimes when she was mad about something, she would do that. He wasn't wearing a mask, I explained to Jamie. Hush, Jack, said Veronica. Why are you so mad, Veronica? I couldn't help asking. I thought this was make that I thought this would make her angrier, but actually she shook her head. It was bad how we did that, she said just getting up like that, like we'd seen the devil. I was scared for what Jamie was going to say, you know. I didn't want him to say anything that would hurt the little boy's feelings. But it was very bad, us leaving like that. The mama knew what was going on. But we didn't mean it, I answered. Jack, sometimes you don't have to mean it to hurt someone, you know. You understand? This was the first time I ever saw August in the neighborhood, at least that I could remember but I've seen him around ever since then, a couple of times in the playground, a few times in the park. He used to wear an astronaut helmet sometimes, but I always knew it was him under the helmet. All the kids in the neighborhood knew it was him. Everyone had seen August at some point or another. We all knew his name, though he didn't know ours. And whenever I've seen him, I try to remember what Veronica said. But it's hard. It's hard not to sneak a second look. It's hard to act normal when you see him. Our next chapter is called Why I Changed My Mind. Who else did Mr. Tushman call, I asked Mom later that night. Did he tell you? He mentioned Julian and Charlotte. Julian, I said. Ugh, why Julian? You used to be friends with Julian. Mom, that was like in kindergarten. Julian's the biggest phony there is, and he's so trying so hard to be popular all the time. Well, said Mom, at least Julian agreed to help this kid out. You got to give him credit for that. I didn't say anything because she was right. What about Charlotte, I said. Is she doing it too? Yes, Mom said. Of course she is. Charlotte is such a goody two-shoes, I answered. Boy, Jack, said Mom, you seem to have a problem with everybody these days. It's just, I started, Mom... You have no idea what this kid looks like. I can imagine, she said. No, you can't. You've never seen him. I have. It might not even be who who you're thinking it is. Trust me, Mom, it is. And I'm telling you, it's really, really bad. He's deformed, Mom. His eyes are like down here. I pointed to my cheeks. And he has no ears, and his mouth is like... Jamie had walked into the kitchen to get a juice box from the fridge. 
Ask Jamie, I said. Remember, Jamie? Remember the kid we saw in the park after school last year? The kid named August? The one with the face? Oh, that kid, said Jamie, his eyes opening wide. He gave me a nightmare. Remember, Mommy? The nightmare about the zombies from last year. I thought that was from watching a scary movie, answered Mom. No, said Jamie. It was from seeing that kid. When I saw him, I was like, ah, and I ran away. Wait a minute, said Mom, getting serious. Did you do that in front of him? I couldn't help it, said Jamie, kind of whining. Of course you could help it, Mom said, scolding. Guys, I have to tell you, I'm very disappointed by what I'm hearing here. And she looked how she sounded. I mean, honestly, he's a little boy just like you. Can you imagine how he felt to see you running away from him, Jamie, screaming? It wasn't a scream, argued Jamie. It was like an ah. He put his hands on his cheeks and started running around the kitchen. Come on, Jamie, said Mom angrily. I thought both my boys were more sympathetic than that. What's sympathetic, said Jamie, who was only going into second grade. You know exactly what I mean, Jamie, said Mom. It's just he's so ugly, Mommy, said Jamie. Hey, Mom yelled. I don't like that word. Jamie, just get your juice box. I want to talk to Jack alone for a second. Look, Jack, said Mom as soon as he left, and I knew she was about to give me a whole speech. Okay, I'll do what I said, which completely shocked her. You will? Yes. So I can call Mr. Tushman? Yes, Mom, yes. I said yes. Mom smiled. I knew you'd rise to the occasion, kiddo. Good for you. I'm proud of you, Jackie. She messed up my hair. So here's why I changed my mind. It wasn't so I would have to hear Mom give me the whole... It wasn't so I wouldn't have to hear Mom give me the whole lecture. And it wasn't to protect August from this kid, Julian, who I knew would be a, a jerk about the whole thing. It was because when I heard Jamie talking about how he had run away from August going, ah, I suddenly felt really bad. The thing is, there are always going to be kids like Julian who are jerks. But if kids like Jamie, who are usually nice enough kids, can be that mean, then a kid like August doesn't stand a chance in middle school. Our next chapter is called Four Things. First of all, you do get used to his face. The first couple of times I was like, whoa, I'm never going to get used to this. And then after a week, I was like, huh, it's not so bad. Second of all, he's actually a really cool dude. I mean, he's pretty funny. Like the teacher will say something and August will whisper something funny to me that no one else hears and totally will crack me up. He's also just overall a nice kid. Like he's easy to hang out with and talk to and stuff. Third of all, he's really smart. I thought he'd be behind because he hadn't gone to school before, but in most things, he's way ahead of me. I mean, maybe not as smart as Charlotte or Zamina, but he's up there. And unlike Charlotte or Zamina, he lets me cheat off of him if I really need to, though I've only needed to a couple of times. He also let me copy his homework once, but we both got in trouble for that after class. The two of you got the exact same answers wrong on yesterday's homework, Miss Rubin said, looking at us like she was waiting for an explanation. I didn't know what to say because the explanation would have been, oh, that's because I copied August's homework. But August lied to protect me. He was like, oh, that's because we did our homework together last night, which wasn't true at all. Well, doing the homework together is a good thing, Miss Rubin said, but you're still supposed to do it separately, okay? You could work side by side if you want, but you can't actually do your homework together, okay? Got it? After we left the classroom, I said, dude, thanks for doing that. And he was like, no problem. That was cool. Fourthly, now that I know him, I would say I actually do want to be friends with August. At first, I admit it, I was only friendly to him because Mr. Tushman asked me to be especially nice and all that. But now I would choose to hang out with him. He laughs at all my jokes, and I kind of feel like I can tell August anything. He's a good friend. Like if all the guys in fifth grade were lined up against a wall and I got to choose anyone that I wanted to hang out with, I would choose August. Our next chapter is called Ex-Friends. Bleeding scream? What the heck? 
Summer Dawson has always been a bit out there, but this was too much. All I did was ask her why August was acting like he was mad at me or something. I figured she would know. And all she said was bleeding scream. I don't even know what that means. It's so weird because one day me and August were friends and the next day, whoosh, he was hardly talking to me. And I hadn't the slightest idea why. When I said to him, hey August, you mad at me or something? He shrugged and walked away. So I would take that as a definite yes. And since I knew for a fact that I didn't do anything to him to be mad about, I figured Summer could tell me what's up. But all I got from her was bleeding scream. Yeah, big help. Thanks, Summer. You know, I've got plenty of other friends in this school, so if August wants to officially be my ex-friend, then fine. That's okay by me. See if I care. I've started ignoring him like he's ignoring me in school now. This is actually kind of hard since we sit next to each other in practically every class. Other kids have noticed and have started asking if me and August have had a fight. Nobody asks August what's going on. Hardly anyone ever talks to him. Anyway, I mean, the only person he hangs out with me is, the only person he hangs out with other than me is Summer. Sometimes he hangs out with Reed Kingsley a little bit, and the two Maxes got him playing Dungeons and Dragons a couple of times at recess. Charlotte, for all of her goody two-shoeing, doesn't ever do more than nod hello when she's talking to him and, or passing him in the hallway. And I don't know if everyone's still playing the plague behind his back, because no one's really ever told me about it directly. But my point is, it's not like he has a whole lot of other friends he could be hanging out with instead of me. If he wants to diss me, he's the one who loses, not me. So this is how things are between us now. We only talk to each other about school stuff if we absolutely have to. Like I'll say, what did Ruben say the homework was? And he'll answer. Or he'll be like, can I use your sh pencil sharpener? And I'll get my pencil sharpener out of my pencil case for him. But as soon as the bell rings, we go our separate ways. Why this is good is because I get to hang out with a lot more kids now. Before, when I was hanging out with August all the time, kids weren't hanging out with me because they'd have to hang out with him. Or they would keep things from me, like the whole thing about the plague. I think I was the only one who wasn't in on it, except for Summer and maybe the D&D &D crowd. And the truth is, though nobody's that obvious about it, nobody wants to hang out with him. Everyone's way too hung up on being in the popular group, and he's just as far from the popular group as you can get. But, but now I can hang out with anyone I want. If I wanted to be in the popular group, I could totally be in the popular group. Why this is bad is, A, I don't actually enjoy hanging out with the popular group that much, and B, I actually kind of like hanging out with August. So this is kind of messed up, and it's all August's fault. So that is the end of our chapter for today. So we're kind of seeing things from Jack's perspective. At the beginning, he had seen August, and he had a really negative experience because he was so startled by how he looked. But then he thought about how that really made August feel and how if kids like his brother, who are normally nice, are even starting to be mean to Augie, then Augie really needs some people who are going to be kind to him, like Jack. Um, so Jack still has not figured out why August is mad at him, and we learned, although he was being nice in the beginning, him and Augie had become friends, and he, if he could choose who he wanted to hang out with, he would choose August. So he's really missing his friendship, and he's really confused because he knows he could hang out with anyone, really, and Augie doesn't have as many choices. So we'll have to see what happens tomorrow. You can make a prediction. Um, thank you so much for joining me for Read Aloud today. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll continue with Jack's perspective tomorrow. I will see you later. Bye.